As you guys can see, we have a massive unboxing ahead of us. Inside this box is a mystery server that PC server and parts in over for a project. I'm not going to leak what that project is yet, just because I don't want anyone to steal the idea. Um, that project is coming up in about three weeks, because it's going to take me a while to gather the supplies for it. But in the meantime, I want to unbox the server and see what they sent over. So when I was shooting emails back and forth with them, I had a general idea of what I wanted for the project. Uh, I was looking for a 1U to 2U server around eight cores 16 gigs of ram uh, and a hard drive and they sent this over and i'm not exactly sure what this is so today we're going to take this server out of the box we're going to run a couple benchmarks probably install windows uh run cinebench maybe i'll throw a video card in here we'll run uh, 3d mark uh, check out the uh, general performance of this machine uh, and then that's going to be about it for this video so I mean, I just want to open this thing. Look how big this box is. I had to put the wide angle lens on the camera, move the camera all the way back. Just because this box is so big, it's about four feet tall and uh, three feet wide. Now I know the uh, Cinebench thing triggers people, so I'm sorry about that. I meant to say Cinebench, but I always say it wrong. And I'll probably speed this up because it's gonna take a while to get this box open. All right, so take a look at this bad boy. It looks like they sent us over a, uh, I believe that's a 1U um, server. There is a hard drive in here. We got a 146 gigabyte hard drive, uh, according to that label. I love the sticker that they have right here, PC server and parts. Um, this is a uh, HP ProLiant system. And uh, they actually didn't use any packing peanuts. I forgot um, when I ordered my editing rig from them, my 12 core editing rig, uh, they actually packaged their systems in this sort of um, form fitting foam, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I want to take this out of the box and move the box out of the way because it's just too much to work with. And we're going to take a closer look at this system. Now, just a quick shout out to PC Server and Parts for sending this server over for an upcoming project. PC Server and Parts has a huge selection of dirt cheap, powerful servers and workstations on their website and eBay store. I actually bought the 12 core desktop I'm editing on right now from them, and I am extremely happy with my purchase. You can get a basic 8 core machine with 24 gigs of RAM for just under 150 bucks, or you can get an absolute behemoth 40 core server for just over $500. 40 cores for 500 bucks. That's just insane. And their prices get even lower thanks to a coupon code they sent us exclusively for AACAT viewers, of course. Use this code to get 10% off anything on their website. The code and the links to their website and eBay store will all be down in the description. Now, isn't she gorgeous? That is what I call a clean machine inside and out, actually. On the outside, there's no noticeable uh, blemishes, no big dents. There is a couple scratches here and there, like right here. But besides that, really, really clean on the outside. So we're going to start from the front. As you can see, we have a, a single 146 gigabyte drive. I'll pop it out. And it turns out PC server and parts shipped this over with a 10K drive. So that is our single 2.5 inch 10K 146 gigabyte hard drive. Just pop that back in. And as you guys can see, we have a lot more space for a lot more storage. So we have seven additional drive bays right here um, that we could add uh, additional 2.5 inch drives to. On the front, we have two USB ports, uh, indicator lights, and a power button. Intel Xeon inside. So yes, we are rocking two quad core Xeons, so eight cores total. And this is a HP ProLine SE316M1. Moving to the inside, man, check out all of these fans. And these things are loud too. So I did already power this on just to check out what the specs were uh, in the BIOS. And when you turn this thing on at first, it sounds like you're standing right next to an airplane. It is literally that loud. It kind of hurt my ears. Um, so I will <laughs> give you guys that experience um, after we're done taking a look around this machine. So you can see uh, the two heat sinks for both of our Xeon processors. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM total. There is a PCI Express X16 slot right there, if the camera would focus. Um, so we will be able to throw a video card in here. I'm going to toss a uh, GT1030 into this machine, and we'll run some benchmarks using that. Now we have a storage controller right here. I think maybe when I, uh, later on, I might pull this out and add a, a USB 3.0 card, because there is... Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see down there because it's kind of dark, but there is additional SATA ports right here. 
Moving around to the back, you can see some additional I.O. So we have two more USB 2.0 ports right here, two Ethernet ports. It looks like we have an Ethernet port for the system's management interface. Um, we have a VGA video out port, serial, and then redundant power supplies, which is good because this one actually, this one, uh, won't turn on because this fan does not work, um, which isn't a big deal. I might be able to replace it with one of the fans right here. Um, but if I, if I do, that's something I'm going to do after the video. Uh, I think this might have been one of the systems that PC server and parts could not resell. So they sent it to us, which is fine because I, all I wanted was like a server that I could use for the project. And this is perfect um, for the project. Exactly what I needed. And it does run. It runs fine. Uh, but this power supply uh, right here will not come on. And I can actually pull that out. These are nice and modular. So that's what they look like when you yank them out. Let me see if I can get that one. Come on. There we go. So there's both of these modules. Um, each one is a 400 um, watt module. All right, so I'm about to plug one of the power supplies for the server in. When I plug it in, you will hear some fans spinning up. Uh, and those are the fans for the power supply, or one of the fans for the power supply, because this fan works and this one does not. And I'll give you guys a closer look at that uh, when I have this thing actually up and running. Um, so in standby, the power supply fans are on, which is interesting. Um, and everything else is off. And then when I hit the power button, all the fans will come on. And that's when it's just absolutely deafening. So headphone users, please, please, please prepare yourself. Um, turn your volume down because it is very loud. Here we go. That's deafening. Things just scream. <laughs> that sounds beautiful and terrifying at the same time. So here you can see our dead power supply fan. If I move up here and get the camera in focus. So you can see that this one's clearly moving, but this one is stationary. And I'll actually give it a push and it should start moving. There we go, I got that one moving and it's uh, grinding uh, the, the sidewalls of the fan because the bearings all messed up. I'll give you guys a closer look. I moved the lighting over here so you could actually see it. And you can see how slowly it's moving. It's barely chugging along there. So I'm tossing the GT1030 in right now, but just something interesting that I thought I'd show you guys. So this entire uh, PCI Express assembly right here um, this one's for the uh, storage controller, and this one is for what is going to be our uh, video card, uh, is on a riser system. So you kind of just drop it in like so, and when you need to install a card, you just pull it out and put the card in. So I thought that was pretty neat. 1030 is installed. I'm going to install Windows 10 on this, and then we're going to run some benchmarks. The HP P410 RAID controller was not playing well with Windows 10, so what I did is I hooked up my KingSpec test drive directly to one of the board SATA ports, so now we are running Windows 10 off of that. As you can see, I got the GT10 chugging along just fine inside the system, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run some benchmarks, um, video benchmarks, and uh, Cinebench as well, and I'm going to do that through the screencast and through narration because this thing is just too darn loud to talk over. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you guys what this thing is pulling at idle. We are sitting on the Windows desktop right now, and the system is drawing a total of... Well, it actually just jumped up, but it's pulling 170 to 200 watts right now. Looking at the benchmarks, the CPU performance is definitely a bit lackluster. I got a good laugh when I saw that this 8-core system could not break 500 in Cinebench. But you gotta keep in mind, these processors are clocked pretty low, lack hyper-threading, and are nearly 8 years old at this point. Paired with the GT1030, the system actually handled 3D benchmarks decently, and playing Doom and Far Cry 5 on the server was actually a pleasant experience.
there you go, that was a look at the mystery server that PC Server and Parts sent over. Obviously not a performance monster, but I wasn't looking for a performance monster. I just need something that would uh, fit for my project requirements, and this fits the bill perfectly. So very happy with this server that they sent over. And um, for the final video, I will actually be installing Linux on this system, not Windows. So I got all my Windows benchmarking out of the way. Uh, but if you guys have any recommendations for good uh, Linux system performance tests, uh, go ahead and put those down in the description because that's really the only reason I use Windows in these videos is for, is for uh, the performance testing. I like um, all of the performance tests I currently use on Windows um, and of course um, for gaming as well. So after I install Linux on this system, I would like to run some popular Linux benchmarks. Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not already. Also, don't forget to hit that little bell because for some reason YouTube thinks if you're subscribed to a channel, you clearly don't want to get notifications from them. Um, I, I still don't understand that and I will continue to complain about that for eternity. Thanks for watching guys <laughs> and I will see you in the next installment of A Computer Sand Technology.